Um, I think that has not changed as much over the last few years. I think the buyers are looking for theatrical films with names. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's less of the ancillary, the titles that work strictly in ancillary markets, I think are less appealing, um, but the demand for big theatrical titles, or even smaller theatrical titles, but theatrical titles uh, with cast is, is there as strong as ever. Yeah, and I, I think it's, it's quality, that's one thing. And um, we actually found in our slate, we, I mean, the same as, as you guys, we had our biggest slate, yeah, we had seven new films to sell and we sold them all. Were um, you doing pre-sales or were you doing... Are, a mix. Are, are so, so, like, for instance, the, the most interesting film we were selling was this 3D Metallica concert. It was actually a drama taking place during a Metallica concert that will be released at the end of September here. Oh, and that yeah. sold fantastic. What we were really providing was a distribution solution for that. So that sounds it's exactly the opposite of what we typically like. And we thought, well, we can get our head around it. Yeah, I mean, we haven't recovered. I mean, I think the decline of uh, DVD and... Europe and beyond is has been a disaster. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it so. depends completely where you look. The U.S. is two or three years ahead of the rest of the world. It's recovered. The home entertainment market is growing at a steady clip. Even DVD flatlined last year as a result of Blu-ray. When you analyze those results within the DVD market, you know it's actually skewing more towards winners. So while the revenue number is stable, actually you look at on an 80-20 rule, the top 20 titles are taking or top 20 percent titles are taking more and more revenue. But, you know, digital is growing at a steady clip. The rest of the world seems to be two or three years behind and is going through that dip that the U.S. was going through. We talked about it yesterday. Yeah. You look at a country like the U.K., their two biggest retailers of DVDs just went bust in Q1. Now, that's a massive impact, and all of a sudden it impacts all your ultimates. I mean, the, the good the news for me in, in looking at what's happened in the United States, though, is that here we have an answer to the question that people were very worried about a few years ago, which is we've taken the biggest pillar of the film business, which is home entertainment, and it was just, you know, sliding into the trough. Will we ever recover? You know, w will we ever uh, get out of this trading of, uh, of analog dollars for digital dimes and so forth? And the answer is yes. Certainly here, the answer is yes. We've seen it happen. Uh, I don't think 2012 is a blip. I think 2012 honestly reflects the fact that digital, the, the digital future is here and it's catching up with the DVD decline. Now we have to hope that that comes sooner than later in the rest of the world, but the answer is we've survived. VOD market, an advertising ad VOD market. Um, and it's even, you have two main revenue sources. You've got box office, which uh, is actually for the kind of say upper middle to upper class if you'll people have who make a significant amount of money um, and and then basically for the rural population which by the way is still 80% of China's population let's not forget they are being served by uh, free VOD portals and there's been a lot of consolidation but essentially the way to think about it which is slightly odd for, for, for kind of a Western sense is you get your computer screen essentially and in the middle is this little player that plays the, the, the movie and you have advertising flashing up all around it the whole time and that's what drives revenue. I read a statistic um, earlier this week that half of the pay subscribers, now whether it's pay TV or VOD, half of the pay subscribers of the world are in India and China. So even though it's not revenue appropriate yet, I mean, I think we have to keep that in mind. That is a massive, massive number. It's because the problems of piracy are already, are already built into our, our economic models. Oh, I see. So um, what, what, what he's saying is it's not going to get worse. It's not going to further erode where we're at. We're, we're kinda, we kind of are where we're at uh, with piracy. And just going back to how markets, markets are going to mature uh, in the developing areas, this is what we want to see happen is, is piracy starting to go down. Um, and I believe technology is the way that that's well, and, and, and government support. I mean, ultimately, look at what happened in China. Five years ago, it, the government didn't, honestly, didn't really, turn, didn't, uh, turn, turned a blind eyes too softly put. And all of a sudden, they, clearly, the Chinese government has decided that it wants to foster an, an indigenous Chinese movie-going public industry. And all of a sudden, they, they start taking copyright um, laws very seriously because... Um, uh, and, and this isn't just in media. I mean, this is about protecting patents for engineering and, and what have you. Across the board, literally in the last three years, all of a sudden, it is incredibly, you get put in jail very quickly in China for copyright infringement. You didn't used to do that.